and welcome to our guest, Dr. Francis Collins, who is the director of the National Institutes of Health here in Bethesda, Maryland. I guess the first question is, how concerned should Americans be about the coronavirus? I think at the present time, there's no reason for considerable anxiety in America because we still have less than a dozen cases in our country. At the present time, as of right now, I think Americans ought to be a lot more worried about the flu than they are about coronavirus. So 10,000 people have died of the flu this year in the United States. Zero people have died of coronavirus in the United States so far this year. So think about that. And if you haven't got your flu shot already, it's not too late. How much worse is it going to get before it gets better? What is the rate of infection or growth right now? So the bad news is this one spreads very rapidly. It's clearly transmitted from person to person, probably even when people aren't even symptomatic. The good news is its lethality seems to be a lot lower than SARS or MERS. Do you expect more cases here in the United States before the disease is contained? I'd be very surprised if 11 is the total that we're going to have. I mean, there are people right now being investigated, most of them people who have been to China and are back and maybe starting to feel poorly. Most of those will turn out to be something else, but there will be potentially other cases. The other thing we're very into is developing a vaccine, and that's already started, started within days of the recognition that we had a real issue here. But it will still be three months before this is going into patients as part of a first clinical trial, and probably a year before you had a fully available set of millions of doses if this were needed. So one should not count on the vaccine right now. Not for a year, perhaps. Not for a year. Would you characterize this as a pandemic? And what is the definition of a pandemic then? It's a little loose. Most people would say a pandemic is when you have an uncontrolled outbreak in more than one continent. Okay, we've got one continent where there's an uncontrolled outbreak, uh, namely Asia. Uh, we don't yet have a second continent where you could say that that has happened. Uh, as we watch over the next few weeks, uh, that might potentially happen. All of these coronaviruses that we know about, SARS, MERS, and now this one, have arrived in the human host from some animal source. If you look at the current coronavirus and say, what is it closest to in terms of its instruction book, its RNA sequence, it's 96% the same as a coronavirus isolated from a bat uh, in a cave in China several years ago. Now, did it come directly from a bat to a human? Did it travel through some other host along the way? We don't know the answer to that. And these viruses, because we are related to those animals, uh, figure out how they can infect not just the animals, but us too. Are the Chinese to blame for that market that we've read about in Wuhan? Is that really the problem? I think a lot of people leap to the conclusion that it was the market that was the source of this. I don't think we really know that. Uh, there is some evidence that this virus might have been in a few people in China before the initial cases were identified in people who had been to the market. Let's sort of keep an open mind to that. There's a lot of detective work yet to do. And what about the Chinese government's response um, to this crisis, I think is, is not too strong a word to use. You know, the Chinese were very much criticized uh, after the SARS epidemic because that clearly was kept under wraps for quite a long time, and only when it was really quite serious did it begin to become clear. I think they tried much harder this time uh, not to have that be the case. And so it was, to their credit, possible for the actual RNA sequence of this virus to be made public within only two or three weeks uh, after the initial reports. I know you say that Americans should probably worry more about the flu virus yes. and get a flu shot, but is there anything, Dr. Collins, that Americans should do about the coronavirus? Any way they should change their behavior? I think for the average American, there's nothing one needs to do. Most of us, I think we can go about living our lives worrying about our friends and colleagues in other parts of the world, particularly China. 
We don't need to wear masks necessarily then. I mean, there's been a run on masks. You can't buy them in stores and even online in many instances. There has been. Do they work also? You know, masks are variable in their effectiveness. As much as people would like to believe that that's blocking any virus from getting in, uh, you're actually breathing around the outside of the mask most of the time. So the protection there is really pretty limited. I, I would especially think for people here in this country who are unlikely to be in a circumstance where they're exposed to the coronavirus, buying a mask isn't necessary. Again, think more about the flu. And by the way, if somebody has symptoms of the flu, they ought not to be coming to work and spreading it around to the rest of their colleagues. And what about the World Health Organization? Um, how do they factor into the work that you do? The World Health Organization is the entity that has the responsibility for the whole plan. Medical research is one of those last remaining topics that is not partisan. It doesn't get caught up in political battles. Uh, it's not so affected by polarization. 